Whenever you're using a printer, you're constantly going through different supplies, and printers have different consumables associated with them. Laser printers certainly have a lot of consumables associated with them, most specifically these types of toner cartridges. Inside the toner is a lot of powdered ink. We call that toner. If you were to let that ink out, that toner would get into the air, and it's very light. It floats around very easily. And when it sticks to something, it smears all over the place. It's really a nasty type of ink to have to work with, which is why it's all self-contained in this tiny little uh, toner cartridge here that we can just slide into the computer Take it out, put a new one in, makes it very, very simple and very clean to do. The toner's designed to stick to the paper, though. And as long as we have toner inside of that, we'll see information coming out on our printer. It gets kind of lighter and lighter as we print along, then we know we're getting low on that toner inside of it. We're using a process called fusing to actually take all those little dots that would normally float around that little toner dust and we're forcing it onto the page, we're heating it up and we're pressing it onto the page. So when it comes out to the printer, it's not going anywhere. It's not floating around, it's not dusty. It's a very nice environment to work with because that toner, as long as it's being fused properly, is not gonna go anywhere. It's delivered in a cartridge because if you tried to refill this yourself with toner, a toner would go everywhere. It's just a mess. It's like soot, and then it makes a mess everywhere else. So you usually take the entire cartridge out, and then you put a brand new cartridge into the computer. You can do this with your bare hands. You don't get any toner on you. It's a very clean process as well. Take the old cartridge you have, though. It can be reused again. There is that photoelectric drum inside of this. There's other components that are moving inside of this particular toner cartridge. And the toner itself can be replaced. And as long as it's still working, we could use it again. So we can send it off to be recycled. And when it comes back, we can just use it all over again. If you have an inkjet printer, then you know that there are ink cartridges that are used to be able to take the ink, spray it onto the paper, and make the image that you want to print out. These are very proprietary. So if you have an HP inkjet printer, then you need ink that comes from HP. You really can't get this from anywhere else. You also want to look and make sure that the printer type for the inkjet cartridge you're purchasing is matching the actual printer. So you want to be sure that if you're going and purchasing new ink that you look on that box. On this box will be written a bunch of different printer types. You want to be sure it matches the exact printer model that you're using. It can't be close. It has to be the exact printer model because even from year to year on very similar printers, these companies tend to change the ink cartridge type. So you can't buy up a lot of them either. And if you go from one printer model to another, you can't be guaranteed to use the exact same type of ink cartridge. Some manufacturers even started using these chips that are on the ink cartridge itself. The ink cartridge will only work in that printer if that chip is there. And that means that you can't use third-party types of ink cartridges to go in some of these printers. And that's what your printer manufacturers are trying to do. You'll notice the cost of the printer is, is very inexpensive. But then you start buying the ink, and you realize that's their business model. Their business model is to sell you ink, and it's not to bring the prices of that ink down, or else they're not going to recoup any of those costs for the printers. It is uh, perhaps not the best situation to be in, but when they start adding these onboard chips onto certain models of these, becomes almost a requirement. You have to buy that manufacturer's ink cartridge to have it work inside of that printer. Ah, uh, But if there is a will, there is a way. Some people will take and put holes right on the top of those ink cartridges, take their own type of ink, and have a big hose that plugs in right to the top of that ink cartridge, and they will refill the cartridge through the top, leaving that chip in place and allowing you to refill that with ink that perhaps doesn't cost as much as buying it new from the manufacturer. Probably not the easiest thing to do and usually not very recommended. You aren't quite certain the quality of ink you're getting. You don't know if it's going to clog up your inkjet. But in some cases, perhaps that's a more economical way than buying it new right off the shelf. One of the biggest consumables for any printer is the paper that you're using. There are reams and reams of paper that you might use, and there's specialized types of paper. There is inkjet paper, there's laser jet paper, there's photo paper. You tend to want to focus on using the paper that's been specifically manufactured to use in the type of printer that you're using. You certainly don't want to take photo paper and use it in a laser jet. It's not designed to be under pressure and heat. It may melt and create problems inside of your laser jet 
Learjet printer. There's also a color value, a brightness value associated with paper. Some is brighter. It's more whiter than other kinds of paper. So you'll see values like a 92 brightness or a 97 brightness associated with this. The brighter the color, the more white and the more vibrant some of these colors will be when you print them on the paper. You also see very commonly a weight of paper. And your printer will be optimized to use a certain weight or ranges of weights of paper. You may see 24 pound paper and 28 pound paper. In the United States, we measure this in pounds. It may be different in other parts of the world. And it really is the, the weight of the paper when it's in a much larger view before it's cut up into smaller pieces. How weighty, how heavy is this paper? So your thicker paper is going to be a heavier weight. It just makes sense. Let's see what we've learned about these printer components and consumables. Where can you find the configuration options for your printer? There's going to be a number of configuration options that you can find when you're working on your desktop. And if you start to go into your printer properties, then you'll be able to see all of the driver configurations for that printer. Another question, what should you check if your printer properties are not displaying the correct printer components? Something doesn't jive here. You're seeing not the right type of trays. You're not seeing the right type of fonts. Something's not quite right. And it's probably because your printer driver is mismatched. You want to be sure your printer driver matches exactly with the printer that you're using. And the last question, what are two ways to connect a printer directly to the network? Well, we know that we've looked at two ways. One where you would have a built-in network interface card and you'd plug the Ethernet connection right into it. Or you can get an external print server that might connect wirelessly to this network. Or it might even have a wireless connection built right into the printer. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our 22701 section 1.11, where we needed to know the difference between local and network printers, our compatibility of printer drivers, and the consumables we could expect to use whenever we're using our printers. If you'd like to see any of our free a videos, you'd like to send me an email or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.